So it's about nine o'clock in the morning and I'm headed up to Newport, Tennessee. The auction that I bid in is an industrial plant shutdown auction. Uh, it's for a ConAgra plant. And so what I bid on was some of the maintenance and repair equipment out of some of their shops. It was really hard to not bid on way too much. Uh, it's almost as easy as eBay with some of these auctions now that they're online. And there were things that I had real trouble passing up. Newport, Tennessee is about four hours away from my shop in Duluth, so it's quite the road trip. What I did find is I found a 20-inch swing Rockwell drill press from the 1960s. Uh, that's exactly what I've been looking for for the shop for a while. The other thing that made its way into my auction bid list was a little welder. I've been in the market for a stick welder for a little while. I have a Lincoln AC225, which is a great little machine, uh, but unfortunately it's AC only. So what I found is a Miller Econo Twin, uh, and I had never heard of the Econo Twin before, but evidently it's kind of like this weird hybrid between a uh, Econo TIG and a Thunderbolt. So it's a constant current stick welder, but it also has high frequency start capability. So if you hook up a TIG torch to it, you can actually TIG weld with it. And you can TIG weld aluminum because it's an AC and DC machine. So I'm really excited to get this in the shop and start playing around with it. I think I'm going to need the back end of here. So it's about 6 o'clock and I just made it back to Georgia. I've still got about two more hours of driving, but everything seems to be going really smoothly so far. Uh, I do have a little bit of a dilemma though. I was looking at the weather forecast. It's looking like I have a chance of rain tomorrow. And it's gotten down in the 30s now, so I'm getting kind of worried about having this stuff outside for too long. Uh, I went ahead and stopped and I sprayed the drill press with some corrosion inhibitor. And what I'm going to do is when I get back to the shop tonight, I'm going to go ahead and unload the welder. Uh, and I'll throw some plastic sheeting and, or a tarp over the drill press for now, so hopefully it doesn't have any problems with the weather. But I'm going to be fighting the rain trying to get this all unloaded in time. So I'm going to do as much as I can tonight, and we'll see how it goes. So I made it back to the shop, and everything seemed to hold up fine, but it is very dark. Time to get unloaded. The welder has a lifting eye on top, so hopefully I can get it scooted to the side of the trailer and come get it picked up. Should be a pretty easy pick with the engine hoist. The lifting eye is right here underneath all these leads. So I got the Miller welder into the shop. I'm going to go ahead and get it jacked up to a more reasonable working height and take a look at it. The main problem I see here is that this handle, when you spin it, doesn't change anything on the amperage indicator here. I don't know if this is just disconnected or if there's a missing set screw or something like that. So we're definitely going to open it up and find out. I've got the leads pulled off the top and boy is this welder dirty. Uh, I think the next order of business is going to be to degrease this a little bit and just get it reasonably clean. Got the welder all cleaned out and I'm starting to figure out what's going on with it. It's a little hard to see on camera, but I figured out what's going on with the amperage selector and why it's not working. Now what you're looking at right here is the main transformer. And this piece in the middle here, this is called the shunt. This piece moves in and out as you crank the amperage dial on the front of the machine, and that adjusts the magnetic fields inside the transformer and changes the amount of current available. 
the lead screw that moves this shunt right here is stripped. Uh, what it seems like happened here is uh, somebody allowed this shunt to become filled up with grease and seized and then cranked the lead screw really hard and ripped all the threads off it. I'm hoping that the steel nut inside the shunt is okay, uh, but the only way to find out is to pull everything apart and take a look. So right now there's no way to set the current except by reaching your hands in there and manually moving the shunt. Uh, it does move. I did get it unseized. It was just a lot of grease buildup. Uh, so that lead screw is definitely going to need to be replaced. I'm going to go ahead and remove these little blocks here that pinch down on the shunt. Miller calls these uh, anti-noise blocks, and hopefully that description is accurate, because when I fired this thing up before, man, it was loud. Two hours later. I guess I used to have a welder. What happened here is I started tearing into the shunt mechanism, and I realized it wasn't going to come out without taking out pretty much everything in the welder. I have the front and the back panels removed, and that includes all of the high-frequency components and the fan. Uh, and so this will open up some access where I can actually get in and fix this shunt problem. After about an hour-long battle, I am victorious. I got the lead screw out, and now I can take it over to the bench and measure it and order some replacement parts. This lead screw has seen better days. This part of the lead screw has been heavily worn. Uh, this is where the most common amperage ranges were for this welder, and it's just completely destroyed this. It's worn this lead screw to the point where it won't even engage with the nut inside the shunt. And so once you get to this point on the lead screw, the shunt's basically stuck in place until you push it manually with your hands. Rather than trying to fix this part, uh, because this is just too worn to save, I'm going to completely replace it. It should be a pretty easy part to machine. Instead of trying to do this in one piece on the lathe out of a piece of bar stock, what I've done is I've bought some 3 8 16 threaded rod, which is exactly the same as this lead screw. The shaft collar here, from here back, I'm going to make that in one machined piece from this piece of three-quarter inch brass bar stock. This will be a good little lathe project and shouldn't take very long. I've got the brass bar stock set up in the lathe. Went ahead and marked it out using a scale and set my tool at 1.675 inches or 1 and 5 eighths. I also set my carriage stop here so I can just come up to the shoulder very easily and turn this down quickly. This is looking pretty good. Uh, I think this works out better as one piece rather than having the separate shaft collar on there, although it's not really adjustable. 
I'm going to use an eighth inch transfer punch to mark out this hole. If you want to know more about transfer punches, check out my other video up here. There's the mark. I got the cross hole drilled. These little holes are actually hard to get right, so moment the truth. Looks like it's a perfect fit. Perfect fit. Here's the finished lead screw next to the worn out one. I think this is gonna work really well. Uh, this will thread in here, and then back inside the transformer is this little threaded shaft collar that has to go on it, and then it has to be tightened down with a set screw. That lets this lead screw pull the shunt in and push the shunt out. Everything moves very smoothly in and out, all the way in, all the way out. And I'm very happy with this lead screw replacement. To see how this welder works as a TIG, I went ahead and picked up a cheap eBay torch. Uh, this is the Yes Welder brand, which is pretty much the same as most of the other import torches. Uh, this is modeled after the CK17 series, uh, and it is a flex head. From taking a quick look at it, it seems like a pretty nice torch head. The power cable and hose is definitely not as flexible as the CK, but it does look like it'll hold up pretty well in the shop. This torch came with the standard collet style assembly and a number 4, 5, and 6 cup. I also went ahead and picked up the gas lens kit that fits this torch. This actually looks to be a pretty nice kit. We'll see how these consumables hold up. On the other end, the cable comes to a 35 to 50 dense connector uh, and then has a separate argon hose right here. Uh, this is perfect because this will let me plug it directly into my welder and then hook this into my argon cylinder. I've got everything plugged into the welder and hooked up to the argon. What I'm going to do now is get this torch set up. What I'm going to run is a 16th inch gas lens and a number 6 cup. To do that, I need to take off the Teflon insulator that came on the torch and install this one that came with the gas lens. Then this threads into the torch body here, nice and snug. There's the 16th inch collet that'll go in the back of the torch. And then the number six cup threads right here on the front. Since I have a feeling as I learn how to TIG, I'm going to be going through a lot of tungsten. I'm going to go ahead and use the long back for this torch. This kit does come with a stubby back though, so you can really get your torch down to a very small size. So I spent a few minutes laying down some beads, and I have to say, I'm really impressed with the welder. It's nice and smooth, and the arc is really stable. Now I just have to learn how to TIG weld. Yeah. 